Okay, so in the second of our four videos looking at uh, price discrimination, we're just going to spend a few minutes thinking about first degree price discrimination. Now, how does this work for a supplier? Well, basically the idea is that you try to charge or tease out of people, each individual potential consumer, what they're willing and able to pay. And the example we gave was perhaps a tourist bazaar where the seller uh, is essentially negotiating or bartering with each customer as they come along for the price they're willing to uh, to conclude a transaction. That will be a type of first degree discrimination. It can also happen increasingly in things like auction sites where you have auctions of individual items, often many, many individual auctions in a given day. And essentially you're trying to tease out of the consumer what they're willing to pay. Let's just work through the analysis diagram here. It uses standard cost and revenue curves. So here we have a situation with a downward sloping demand curve, AR and MR, and the usual sort of short run cost curves. Now, the standard profit maximizing price is P1 uh, with output Q1 sold, because that's where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. And at that price, uh, the average cost is AC1. So therefore you can make a, a good profit shown by the shaded area. Now, if you charge a single price for the product, producing Q1 and everybody's paying P1, then that's the maximum total profit this business can achieve. And they're making some good profit. But could they do better than that? And the answer is yes, because if you look at the demand curve, some consumers are willing and able to pay more than price P1. Indeed, they might be willing to pay price I don't know, P2, higher than that. Now, a monopolist might be able to segment the market and charge different prices for different groups of consumers. And first degree is essentially the, the kind of extreme end of this, the extreme version, where they're trying to tease out of everybody their willingness to pay. It's very hard to show every single consumer on one diagram. So let's just pick two or three different prices. It could be the case, for example, that instead of charging everybody P1, you might sell quantity Q2, to consumers who are willing to pay P2. Now, if you can do that, uh, you can generate some extra revenue. And of course, what you're doing there is you're turning consumer surplus into extra revenue and profit. Likewise, you could go below P1. You see, there might be some consumers willing to pay P3. They wouldn't buy or buy the same quantity at price P2. But you can charge them P3 if you can find them, negotiate with them and still make a profit because the price is still greater than the marginal cost of supply. So it's kind of marginal profit. Providing you're making a profit on the next consumer, it's worth going ahead with that transaction and earning some extra revenue. And likewise, you could go all the way down to P4. At P4, the price that people are willing to pay equals the marginal cost of supply. So you're covering your face in that sense, breaking, breaking even on that transaction, but again, earning some extra revenue. And indeed, that's the equilibrium with perfect price discrimination. You'll sell quantity Q4 at a whole range of prices, from P2, a little bit higher even, all the way down to, to P4. And if you contrast using a shaded area with the revenue, price times quantity, from charging a single price, P1, and output Q1, so that was our revenue right at the start, then that revenue can be supplemented by those new shaded areas by extracting the consumer surplus, selling some extra units, and uh, increasing your output up to Q4. Uh, if you contrast uh, what happened before, essentially what we're doing here is we're turning that consumer surplus in the yellow shaded area into extra revenue and profit for the firm. In our third video, we'll take a look at the most common form of price discrimination, which is third degree discrimination.